Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Christy Van with Fantastic Finances and on this channel I teach Velocity Banking. But today I have my very special guest and bestie ever. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Alberin is with me and I am so excited because I love talking to him. Uh, I love sharing him with you and just how huge his business has become. I'm so excited for him and that I could be a part of that this past year, getting to know him and see how he works, what good things he does. That's why it's so important that I share him with you because I feel like that if you um, are in the middle of growing a business, maybe you haven't even thought to step into the business yet. He is such a motivator uh, and he knows how to promote. He knows how to help you to build the foundation of whatever it is your desire is. Uh, and it's just been a pleasure to work with him. So I wanted to introduce him to my new subscribers today, let you know that I have one of the best business consultants slash everything you need for your business with me today. Alex, welcome. I'm so glad that Thank you're you. back. No, thanks for having me. You give the best testimonials. I was just telling her before we jumped on, we never prepare for these interviews. We don't discuss like, hey, I need you to say X, Y, or Z. Um, but no, Christy is the best client I could ever ask for. Um, her husband's amazing. We've hung out with, you know, together a few times with my fiance and them as well. And so um, it's definitely developed into a real relationship. It's only been, I mean, about a little more than a year, maybe 13, 14 months. Right. Um, but I appreciate you having me on because of course your channel is about finances, but um, when it comes to finances, you can spend money, you can invest, you can pay off debt, you can move numbers around, uh, but you can also make money, right? Yeah. So that's what we want to talk about. Right. So that's where you came into my life is because I was trying to uh, start the YouTube business. Now, I wasn't going for what I am today. Uh, I feel like that with you knowing, uh, knowing you and bringing you on board has been so motivating, I mean, to keep me moving. Uh, I'm going to give God all the glory because I feel like that he certainly has given me favor uh, with people so that they understand the message of velocity banking. That is a for sure. But when I came out of the W-2 job that I was in, I made a certain amount of money. I don't care to share it. It was about 8,000 I was bringing home a month. And you asked me, you said, what would you need to make to step away from the full-time position and go in, in business for yourself. And I said, well, I would have to at least break even with what I'm making now. And you said, you can do it. You've got this, this is going to be easy. And I'm like, this guy is crazy. He is crazy. <laughs> she literally thought that she, she would send me emails. She's like, this video sucks. Like, I don't, I don't even know if you know what you're talking about. Like you think I have potential. I got to right. dig up those emails, but you know, she's hundred percent right. She, uh, right. But you still believed generally in long term in the game plan, but there was definitely some short term, you know, skepticism once we got started. But that's okay. Well, the point being that I knew people needed the message of velocity yeah. making. I knew mm -hmm. that how how that had come into my life and literally engulfed my finances and changed everything. I knew that people out there just like me did not know about tools in the bank. They didn't realize that they were missing the major component to getting out of debt. So that was the point of starting the YouTube was so that I could throw the message out there and whoever took it great. You know, I was hoping for two or 300 people. <laughs> I'm at over 200,000 mm -hmm. uh, now, and that makes me so excited to know how many people have been touched by this message and they're getting their lives in order. That just gets me out of bed every morning. This morning, my daughter told me, she said, I'm not going to go to school today. And I'm like, yay, because <laughs> that means I can lay in bed, right? Mm -hmm. But as soon as she told me that, uh, she went back to bed, but I was like, brain on here we go rolling what do we need to do today let's get up and help somebody so uh, i don't get to sleep much but it's been so much fun on this ride and i wanted to again introduce alex because he's making a difference every day in my life still uh, we talk every single day i believe mm -hmm. at least once um always texting always in touch because we're constantly feeding ideas back and forth. So, you know, if I have an idea about 
something as like my audio the other day i wrote you and i said hey what's the best thing i can use for my audio that i can still move around at the board and you know you gave me suggestions so that's where alex comes in and people if you know how he has grown since i have known him this last year oh my gosh i want to say that i have mothered him and brought him up <laughs> but i have not <laughs> the student has become the teacher in yeah. your sense that's for sure <laughs> that is true that is true so this means you watching this video right now tells me that you need to hear what we're going to talk about today because you know just like he said when the student's ready the teacher will arrive and so I feel like that that's when Velocity Banking came into my life. I feel like that several things from my certified welding inspections that I was doing, the testing, when I passed, uh, when I started getting the flood of jobs that was coming in, I felt like I was ready to take it. So it was like everything came to me as I became ready. So maybe you seeing this video today is your cue that you are ready to step into whatever it is that's been on your mind for maybe years now, maybe decades. So Alex is, I can't even explain it. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, and I should have had notes in front of my face <laughs> because he <laughs> That's is why people love Christy. That's why they love, and I wish I could take credit for fantastic finances. If anything, <laughs> I told her not to do it. She was like, no, but like fantastic, fantastic. I'm like, it's okay. Let's just, let's throw it out there and see what happens, right? right? I wish I could take credit for it, but no, Christy is so genuine, so authentic. And that's why, I mean, she can create one or two videos per day because she's just like, okay, I have an idea. Let's just start the camera and let's just see what happens. And that's why people love you, a big part of why they love you. But that's also why you can create content so consistently. And I think a lot of people, when they get into YouTube or creating content in whatever fashion, they think of themselves as like a TV star now and they need a script and they need lighting and wow. a production team. And then that comes with time and resources that they need to invest. And for them, they use that as an excuse for why they don't have a YouTube channel. When my biggest client, 1.52 million subscribers, Steven Gardner, he shoots videos from his basement. And every day he gets 100,000 views a video, 300,000 views every single day. He makes one or two videos a day with his iPhone, no fancy production team, nothing. And so having that authenticity, um, that's a big part of why people watch you. And that's why you can create so much content so consistently. Right. I think so, too, because I get that feedback a lot. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, is I'm not out for perfection. Um, I get that from other YouTubers a lot. They're like, you need to update your stuff. You know, I've had people tell me you need to get the podcast mics. You need to get the lighting right. And I'm working on some things that I want to, but I think that it being organic, is that the word, mm -hmm. uh, to where everybody sees that I'm not trying to put on a show. I'm trying to educate you. I'm trying to teach you what it was that helped me so much in my life. Uh, especially with my finances, which ended up being my whole life. And I mean, I met, I met Alex Albaran. I mean, does it get any better than that? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about you a minute because, uh, yes, I have grown over this last year. I have excelled in ways I never thought was possible. I know that there's more room for growth because there's so many people. You know, I had a person on a live today from Germany. So people are learning and they're able to pick up what I'm doing and use in their country. I'm very surprised about that. But uh, where there's room for growth is where I see what you're doing. And again, that's why I'm pulling you back into my world here for everybody to be introduced to, because you came from literally nothing and have done what you're doing today. And I think that is amazing. And people, I'm just going to tell you, he sent me a video last night, I believe it was, of his new Rolls Royce. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you just went way over my head. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, I mean, that just shows you have really taken nothing and grown it into this huge orchard, not just a seed with a tree, but now you've got, you know, this orchard growing. I think it's beautiful. Tell me about it a little bit. How have things gone for you over this last year? Well, thank you for that. Again, thanks for having me on. And uh, I knew you're going to mention the Rolls Royce thing. It's It's something that, of course, people want to assume oh, you're buying the car to then just show off to people. I only really care what my fiance thinks in this world. I mean, with what clothing I wear, with how I do my hair, that's really all I care about. And of course, what I think, 
right? So I do feel it's unfortunate. A lot of people buy the cars or get the house or like do fancy things to try to impress people because they have some void in themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Not that this is a therapy session, but that's why most people do stuff like that, right? Like they want to show off on social media and things like that. Um, I do it more so because I understand the business I'm in. Um, I do have to promote myself, but I also am reaching a lot of people. And so I know that's going to attract people. If they see I have a Rolls Royce or G-Wagon or like other things we're doing, that's going to bring them in. It's going to get their attention. Then I can really give them value. I can say, hey, you got here for the Rolls Royce. We're going to check out the car. I'm making a video about the car. But now that I got you here, check out the car and let's talk about how I built my business from you know, $0 in the bank. I had a Mazda Speed 6 2007. This is May 2016. So that's almost eight years ago. I mm-hmm. sold my car. It was a manual car. And so I can really market it for a lot of money. Um, <laughs> but I sold it for about $5,000. And I used all of that money to fund my business. I was not going out. I was not driving nice cars. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't going on vacations. I had to turn down many opportunities to have fun and live in the now. But I knew I was building something for the future because I grew up on food stamps. I grew up where on the apartment door, it was always saying late rent, rent due, late notice, eviction notice. It wasn't like, hey, we're doing well with money. The conversation about money was always negative and how we did not have enough of it. So I started, I just always had that hunger. And so that's why I was willing to invest everything I had into my business. And that's where now I'm reaping the benefits that most of the world likes to think about when it comes to entrepreneurship. They think fancy car and private jet and this and that. But I mean, I think it's just things at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect my happiness. It's nice. I could drive a Camry tomorrow and have the same level of satisfaction and happiness as long as I'm helping people delivering value. Um, I think a lot of people, again, they think something like that can happen for them in eight months when it took me eight years of putting everything I had into it. But I think what you and I have in common is the hunger. And I feel like once you know someone is hungry, that's why from day one I knew you're going to blow up with, of course, the right amount of work and time. But you always had the hunger. You were thinking big. For a lot of people, like they start a business, they join a program like mine. And I ask them the same question. You know, what do you want to do? How big do you want to grow? And unfortunately, they're just from a corporate environment or maybe they had a rougher you know, economic environment growing up as well that makes them think small about money. But mm-hmm. there's so much money out there. There's so many different industries. I'm releasing this video next week. I interviewed the Rolls Royce salesman. He sold 100 Rolls Royces so far, and he sold a $5 million Bugatti. So again, the point of the video was, let me bring people in with this fancy car, then let me deliver value. You know, I asked right. him, what industries do people work in? How do they make their money? And he was like, Alex, there's just so much money out there. And right. so you see the mindset difference of, oh, I, maybe I can make 2000 a month online versus abundance. Like there's trillions of dollars out there. There's no reason why anybody watching this video with my help or without my help can't get their own slice of that pie. Going from going from food stamps to mm-hmm. Rolls Royce. Is that how you say that? Rolls Royce? Am I saying Rolls that Royce. Right? Because I yes. am from East Tennessee and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one in this area. I've only seen beat up Ford trucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pickup trucks and yeah, stuff like that. No Rolls Royces <laughs> over there? No Bentleys? If, if there's one, I haven't, honest to God, I've never seen one in this area. Mm. Now, I have seen like a Ferrari, uh, mm. you know, once a year. I might see one of those. Yeah. But, I mean, it's really not a place where we've got a lot of high-dollar vehicles sitting around. Uh, exactly. You know, That's why I like to show stuff like that on video because it maybe shows people that are in that environment. It shows them evidence, right? right. And that's, again, like I want to attract them. It gets their attention and then says, okay, we're not here for the BS though. I want to show you real value and have a real conversation about like how to actually build a business and get out of that situation and just expand their mindset because most of my clients, if not 99% of my clients, they don't care about a Rolls Royce or, you know, private jets. They want to build a business to go from financial security to financial freedom. And I feel like that's a big difference where if you have a great job, you know, you're doing well, according to society standards, you probably are making, you know, six figures, let's say, and you have a house and cars and things are going well. Um, but you also have one customer, which is your company and right. they can lay you off tomorrow and you're out of a job and your income is now down to zero. So most of my clients, they're 45, 50, even 60, and they're successful in the traditional sense in the corporate environment. But they see, wow, like they see friends getting laid off and coworkers losing everything because they thought this income stream was going on forever. But there's nothing like having your own business, your own skill set. 
And that's where I help clients say, okay, well, if you want, want real freedom, you don't need to make millions of dollars or get this fancy stuff. But if you just want freedom, you want to build a business. That's the goal of most clients, right? right. And so uh, I think people watching this video don't Go in the comments and think, oh, look at these people. They're talking about Rolls Royces and stuff like that. Right. Just again, like it's getting your attention, but then focus on the value of, hey, you don't have to get that. I'm not saying you need it or should have one right. um, to be happy. But I know a lot of clients who aren't happy because they don't have the financial means and the freedom to have their own business. So right. That's what we're talking about. Right. And it does seem out of, you know, it's like out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, they're out there. He lives in, he, he lives in South Florida where all mm -hmm. the rich people are. I actually heard that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm like, um, I don't think that matters. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that like with you down there and I see the big city life that is in South Florida, Miami, Boca, all those places. But I also see a lot of Uber drivers. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a lot of people that's not living the high life. Mm -hmm. And I think, I swear, the older I get, it's your mindset. Mm -hmm. What do you think you are? Do you think that you are somebody that's going to work at McDonald's all of your life? Because you were told, um, well, that's what we do. You know, I'm going to be the manager at McDonald's, which there's nothing wrong with being the manager mm -hmm. at McDonald's if that's what you want to do. But we get in a mindset of that's what we're going to be because well you know we were kind of raised in that mentality i was raised to be a secretary and was told oh you're just going to be a secretary and i'm like no i'm not mm -hmm. <laughs> no i'm not you know i just remember my insides exploding when that was said to me but you know i patted it down and i stayed there for a while so i was a secretary and it's like you have to build your own vision you have to put that in front of your face. Everybody I talk to, uh, when it comes to, you know, we're in a negative cash flow, uh, you know, we're not able to make it, we're struggling. I say, put in front of your face what it is you want to see happen this year. Pour no more in 2024 is a real statement to me. That's a real mantra that we need to adapt when we're living in poverty, paycheck to paycheck is because we're declaring i'm done with this i'm done with living poor so i too i remember six seven eight we lived in a one bedroom apartment and my mom and dad had a bed and my brother and i had bunk beds we were in the same room and i mean mm -hmm. it was just big enough for those two beds and then we had a very small living area so i know all about when people talk about, oh, well, I'm just dirt poor. I know, I don't remember toys. I think I played with my brother's Hot Wheels. <laughs> I'm not even sure. So that's what I'm saying mm -hmm. is my mindset started changing as I grew up because I had seen that. And my poor mom, she had suffered financially, you know, uh, hoping my dad would work more, I guess, to bring home more money. She was working full time. I never saw her because she was always at work. Of course, my daughter could probably say that about me right now. But it's like, you should not have to miss family time, vacations, uh, you know, having a few extra things just because your mindset is poor. And you're like, I'm just going to get by in life and then I'm going to die and hopefully get that mansion. I just mm -hmm. don't believe that the Lord put us down here for that. I think mm -hmm. that he is a creator and I believe that we're created in his image and that we're creators and that we do have a certain amount of power over how we're going to live while we're here. Of course, I include him on everything, but at the same time, he expects you to get up and move. Okay. He wants you to take steps forward to move and he's going to help you, but it is about movement. It's about getting out of that mundane, I uh, got done with work. Let's come and lay on the couch and watch TV, watch other people's successful lives, right? While we're sitting here being nothing. So um, I feel like that if we could just, if I could just show people my life and how I have come all the way up and in my 30s, 40s, 50s is where the success come in. Like you are so young and you're saying eight years. Uh, I'm saying eight years, eight to 15 years in my life of just climbing up the mountain, okay? But the my teens, my 20s, most of my 30s were literally 
worrying about stupid stuff like debt and money. Where's it going to come from? I can't make any more. I only make 500 a week and that's it. Uh, that mentality of always looking around but not being able to grasp what it is that's going to help me come up out of this pit of literal depression from where you have nothing. So in, I want to reach people with that message is that as crazy as it sounds, it's just one idea that you need. It's just that passion that you have that maybe you're not you know, catching on that that can be something really big because somebody out there needs whatever your passion is. Like I need you, Alex. <laughs> if you know, but people, they need what you're doing. And that's why, like you said earlier, you change the mindset from, oh, I'm maybe not comfortable shooting videos or I don't want to do this yeah. or I don't want to do that. You flipped it and said, well, I have a lot of people, hundreds of millions of Americans and people around the world that need help with their finances. And I feel like I've been speaking from your perspective, given the gifts and I've gone through the experience to help them do it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And so once you focused on how can I add value, how can I help people? That's why your channel is growing so much. A lot of people, let's say they do make the leap. They start a business immediately. They think, how can I take and not give? Or how can I just give me, give me, give me, and then I'll give you as little as possible. And that's why most people don't grow a business because they don't want to really have partnerships. They don't want to you know, have other people on their channel or go on other channels. It's, it's all about how can I win and how can you lose? Whereas I've grown my business through solely win-win relationships like the one you and I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you made me think because it's like I realize my passion is not making money. My passion is helping people. And when while I'm staying there, I am I've got the world behind me pushing me and it feels wonderful. You feel fulfilled. You don't feel stressed. I don't feel stressed. I feel like I'm excited to get up and work another day. And that's why I want to open up people's eyes to what is your passion? What were you put down here to do? And once you, you already know it, you just don't believe you can do anything with it. And these videos, like Alex said, I hate doing the videos. Now, if there's anything <laughs> stressful, it's getting the videos mm -hmm. done, uh, making sure I have valuable content, uh, getting the editing done, uh, uploading, doing all that. That to me is the work. Yeah. Uh, but it just comes with the job right now, you know, mm -hmm. and but the work of working with one on one with people, that's beautiful. And people are so kind and they're so grateful that, you know, this information's out there and they have a chance. But when it comes to the business side of it, like if we have somebody out here that's listening and they're like, man, I've always wanted to do that. What would you say to them? I would say what are you waiting for in terms of timing? I talked to, I've spoken to maybe 10,000 entrepreneurs because I've had many, many clients over the last eight years. So just with people reaching out to me about my services, I've probably spoken to close to 10,000 people. So I have a pretty good sample size. And most people that don't work with me or just even start their business, they're waiting for the perfect X, right? The perfect timing, the perfect, oh, like once, once Bitcoin goes up to a certain amount, then I'm going to sell it and then start my business, right? Like the perfect this, the perfect that. Perfectionism truly at its core is where if you aren't doing something good enough, you're like scratching your skin. Like you're freaking out because you're working 12 hours a day, seven days a week to figure it out and it's not working, right? But people, when they think of, oh, I'm a perfectionist, I want to make it perfect, they're procrastinating. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to say they're a perfectionist to say, oh, I'm thinking about the ideas or the, the business or the videos I'm going to create. So I would ask you, I mean, what are you specifically waiting for? Number one, but also number two, if you're talking 70 years old, 75 years old, would you look back with regret at not taking a leap of faith and doing something like this? And a hundred times out of a hundred times, the answer is yes. Right. But I think sometimes they need someone like me that's going to be straight with them. I could say, okay, you've been thinking, thinking about this for 15 years, 20 years. You're stuck at this point. You have the money, you have the resources, you have the time but there's something stopping you from getting there. Usually it's just someone like me laying out, hey, you're right here at point A, you wanna to get to point B. This gap, if you do it on your own, it's insurmountable and or it'll just take you too long when I've made the mistakes, right? Like I've spent the advertising money, I've done marketing, I've done videos, like I figured out 
offers and how to structure programs. Like I've made the mistakes so that when clients work with me, they're like you where they can just implement everything correctly from day one. And then everything is done in the correct order versus me. I started my business with no experience, no mentors. It's like getting the instructions to build a bed frame, but you're starting at step one, then skipping to step 20, then going back to step 10. And you're like, I I think I'm doing this right. I'm taking action, but I'm not going in the right steps. Whereas when someone works with someone like me, they get step one, step two, step three in the exact order and the accountability, right? If I tell a client, Hey, crave the three videos in the next 10 days, it's hard to fail me, but it's easy to fail themselves if they didn't have a coach to keep them accountable, just like anything. Right. I believe you gave me some instructions. I can't remember what it was because I had totally tuned you out. (laughs) My husband, you know, I wouldn't even pay you at first because I was like, he's a kid, you know, and Mm. what if, what if we throw away all this money and then like I get nothing out of it. Mm. And I was sort of even doubting my, I was doubting myself because I was like, I can't make videos. Uh, Nobody out there wants to listen to me. I have to figure out another way to get this message out. And you were just like, you know, I want to see, I believe you told me you wanted to see two videos by that following Friday. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to do this. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I sent them to you and they did. (laughs) I I don't think, I don't, I don't think so, but you put in the email, like something like, yeah, these suck or like, I'm so bad or something funny. And I was like, keep it going, Chrissy. Like, at least you did it. You know, wow. but no, even when first you said you were going to sign up, then you said, no, I'm not going to sign up. Yeah. Then I sent you like a, <laughs> uh, an essay of a text. Then yeah. you signed up and um, it, it happens yeah. all the time. People, if, especially you're going from like a corporate job, jumping into entrepreneurship and starting out with money um, and just putting it up front. I mean, that takes a big leap of faith. And so yeah. um, it happens all the time with clients. But again, you said, OK, now let me maximize the ROI on this investment by putting in the work, staying accountable Um, And and just like any relationship, the trust grows over time. Once I work with a client and they see results, they're like, okay, this kid knows what he's talking about. Because most of my clients are double my age, if not more. And so it happens all the time where usually it's the person that wants to work with me, but then their spouse is like, look at his baby face. Like this, this guy's a kid. They're like, I'm not paying this guy that much money. And usually it it all works on the end, but uh, it happens all the time. No, it was switched around for Scott and I, because Mm -hmm. he was like, I'm going to pay for that if you don't, because he said, I know you can do it. And if you have him backing you up, uh, it'll get done. And I'm like, well, I'm not paying him. (laughs) (laughs) And so he literally handed over his credit card to pay you. And I was like, okay, so here we are. I'm so glad he did. But, you know, back to what you were saying, Mm -hmm. that is one thing that I have noticed, even people in my area. Now, I need to hire people, and I've been telling you this, but it doesn't matter what I put out on Facebook for ads, and if you're listening to me and you live in my area, then yes, I'm talking to you. I put ads out that I need help for a superstar to help with a thriving YouTube channel. So you would think that would be like, oh my gosh, I would like to be a part of that. Do you know how many people I've had actually come back off of those ads? How many? One. One guy, Mm. and I have an interview with him for the Mm. video and all this fun stuff, but one. And so you would think, you know, that people would be like, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying about the mindset is, well, I work, you know, I've got my job, you know, I'm making 5,000 a month. That's pretty good around here. So, you know, I'm just going to kind of hang here and do what's safe, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing what's safe. When I left the position I did, I literally was on a wing and a prayer because I didn't have big bunches of money saved up. I just have me and my husband here and bless him. He's so perfect. But it's like, uh, I told him, I said, I don't like the position I'm in. I'm not fulfilled there. Don't like sitting in an office every day doing that. And lo and behold, in my prayers, I'm like, Lord, you have to get me out of here. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Someone else came in and out of the blue wanting the position. And I'm like, I will train you and did. And within two weeks, I was gone, literally doing this full time, making a zero, zero on this business. So I was jumping out there. It's kind of scary. I'm not going to say it's not. It's tremendously scary. You have kids, you have a household. Go ahead. Yeah, because I'm like have everything running here, you know. And it, is, it was like, I, that was where the determination came, came from. 
that I have to make it happen and I'm going to make it happen. And I believe anything that we put our mind to, you can make it happen. It's just you have to start taking the strides you need to get there. Uh, my Facebook page, um, my public Facebook page is Fantastic Strides. And that is a real phrase of meaning to me because you are taking strides to become fantastic. Now I say fantastic because that's my name. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I'll just tell you, that was my Peloton handle. <laughs> and so when I would ride, uh, cause I'm so crazy about my husband mm. that when I went to make my handle for my Peloton, I thought fantastic. That's it. Fantastic. So I just put fantastic in there. Well, when the channel, you know, you ask me, what are you going to call it? I'm like, I have no idea. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, you know, that's kind of like weird, but at the same time, fantastic finances, it just means that you're taking control and you're going to maybe go down a road that Christy Van took to get your finances fantastic or fantastic, because mm. that's ex literally what happens when you use velocity banking. So that's where the name came from. Mm -hmm. But the inspiration besides my husband uh, came from you helping me every day to build a foundation. And I think when I talk to people about you, because, you know, I'll get people that say, tell me about Alex. Do I want to work with him? I can't say enough good things about you because your your work ethics is way goes beyond mm -hmm. ethics. I Thank mean, you. you're like a friend. And that's something I did not even know was out there, especially with somebody living in ritzy Boca, you know, <laughs> dri driving Rolls Royces. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am going to tell you guys that I have been to Miami to see this here feller. And when I was there the first time, if I'm not mistaken, you were driving a Toyota. So this big car thing had just come this year, right? Yo, I had a Tesla, I think the first time, a Tesla. Okay. Then I picked you up like the most recent time, you and Scott in a Camry. Yes. Uh, okay. And then, yeah, next time it'll be a Rolls Royce, but. Woo. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, I was down there visiting another group and hmm. he had a beautiful, bright blue BMW. And I don't know what kind it was. I don't do that. He said it was about 150,000, but it had white leather interior with that blue outlined. I said, mm. this thing is crazy. I mean, these cars, I've never been around them. So when I see things like the G wagon and see, you know, these BMWs and oh my gosh, the Bentley that was sitting at the, the resort. I'm like, wow, I don't even know <laughs> what kind of money these people have. So it but opens I, up your mind because it's like, yeah. there's so much money out there to where people, they not they don't just have one car. Most people that have these nice cars, they have like four or five or six wow. and they drive one different car every single day. Um, and again, it's not something in like a bragging way. It's more just thinking like, oh my gosh, there's so much money out there. And right. that eliminates the excuse. Let's say the internet didn't exist. Maybe you would have an excuse or someone would have an excuse for not building their business. Maybe they were in just a, not the best area where there weren't a lot of customers, but everybody has one of these. They have a phone, right. um, they have a camera, they have Wi-Fi. they have cell phone data. That's all you really need to make it happen. So I just think that the Rolls Royce or other things like that, it's a reminder to myself that, hey, um, you're at this level, you're continuing to level up. Where right? I think a lot of people are scared in their life of showing off maybe in their right. mind, like with cars or houses, because they feel like their family and friends are going to look down on them somehow and be like, oh, look at Mr. or Mrs. Big Shot right. with their fancy car or fancy this and that. But that's how you know who you should cut from your life because if they're not <laughs> exactly. seriously because if they're not promoting you and they, like there's very few people in life we talk about this all the time that you can really share your vision with because a lot of people it's kind of a reflection of themselves if you're the success and you have this big vision and you're doing this and that they look at themselves in your reflection and think oh my gosh i'm not doing anything close to that and right. so instead of them being motivated 99 percent of people even friends and even family they look at their reflection. They don't like what they see. So they try to just take you from up here and just pull you back down. And they're right. like, oh, you're cocky or narcissistic. But right. I saw this quote in a recent podcast and the guy was like, what God tells you about yourself and that you repeat, it sounds narcissistic. But then what the devil tells you about yourself and that you repeat, it sounds realistic. 
Right. And it's not my quote, but it's still an amazing quote because right. it's like, yeah, most people love thinking, well, realistically, oh, if I'm being realistic and once you throw that in there, if you say that too much, then you're not thinking, okay, well, what, what about optimistically? And what if, what if things go according to plan, if not better? So again, I think a lot of people feel like they need permission to be successful or to show off their success. Um, but at the same time, it's something where if somebody in your family or friend group isn't pushing you and promoting you and pushing you to the next level, they just want to bring you down to their level. There's no in between. Right. I, I think that that is a real statement. What you said is because I can, I had voices coming to my head while you were speaking of people on a level that is negative. It's like everything's negative. Everything they talk about is negative. You know, every feeling they have about money for sure is negative. And we just have to flip the script in our head. That's so crazy. And I know somebody out there is sitting, listening to me and they're like, okay, she has been trained by this deadhead over here. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. I have learned that when you flip the script in your head, and that means even from people that you are cursing, that you hate because, you know, they have offended you in some way or they've tried to maybe make your life hell. But I'm saying that when you flip how you're speaking about that person, even when you're sitting in your car alone, because we're not put down here to live this negative life of being worried or stressed out or hating people. I'm sitting in my home right now and I don't have any, but if I walk out the door, <laughs> they're going to be there. Exactly. So and they'll be have... loud and proud about their hate. Exactly. I get so many negative comments or even family and friends that throw in little, you know, little sniping comments here and there. And instead of going down to their level and then starting to bicker with them, I mean, not that I'm better than them, but I'm operating at a different level and they want to bring me down to their level. I kind of almost have empathy for them. I'm like, oh, something must have happened in their childhood or right. like they just never exactly. maybe got the opportunity to really expand and grow because I'm right here. If someone's right here, if they're way above my level, they wouldn't be saying those things. Like they're right. not going to be hating on me, wanting to grow and expand. They would be motivating me just like we're doing in this video. We're not telling you you can't do anything. We're not saying you need permission to be successful. Um, but isn't it funny how a lot of times you have friends, family, people that have no visible success in the area that you're pursuing, they have the loudest opinion, uneducated opinion mm -hmm. on how you should be successful or why you shouldn't be successful um, in that area. And so, right. again, you're not thinking, oh, I'm better than people. I make more money than them. It's more operating at levels. I'm not at my highest level. There's so many people operating at a higher level. And so I look at it as, hey, they're not going to hate on me like this. They're not going to say negative things. So if someone is down here trying to bring me down, I'm like, hey, I can bring you up here. But if you don't want to come then and join the party, then that's fine. I think that that's one of the hardest things to overcome, even with finances. I have spouses that will come to me and they'll say, you know, my husband or wife won't even talk to me about the velocity banking. They won't mm. even try to work with me. They just say it's not going to work. That's a tough situation because I've been there and I know that. So, you know, there's not much you can do with a person because everybody has their own will to act and do as they will. I'm not going to make Alex do anything if he doesn't want to do it. You're not besides going to make let me. you drive the Rolls Royce. Besides that, oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Listen, I'm kidding. Alex, <laughs> not everybody wants the Rolls Royce. <laughs> I know, That's right. one thing about me. And I told you when you yeah. were sending me the videos and stuff, I'm like, I can't imagine sitting in one of those cars like that. I feel uncomfortable as a matter of fact, but wow, I'm not mad at you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you asked me what my dream car was. And right. I said, I don't have a dream car. I love, love, love the giveaways that we do on YouTube. I don't know if you watched this last one that we just had, but I feel like even though I can't hear people, I feel like we're all, you know, belly laughing because it's so crazy mm -hmm. how we go on for over an hour with just the giveaways and to me that's joy to me uh you know giving stuff to my daughters that's joy so i feel like that just because i'm 52 years old and older that i'm over the car stage mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'm into uh i don't even know what i'm into you know my daughter she said let's move and I'm like, why? And she said, mm -hmm. because we need a bigger house. And I said, why? You don't keep the one clean you've got. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, moving up is mm -hmm. not like you said, it's not that you're doing things because, oh, look what I've got. I've got all this money. No, the point is, and I know your heart, Alex. So I know that you're not in a Rolls Royce because, you know, I'm a big wig now. Mm -hmm. You're doing that because people need evidence that what your message is, is true, that you can move up 
you can become better because like you said at the beginning of the video, you started on the food stamps with your parents and look at you now. Everybody needs that encouragement, that dream that's out there, especially 25 year old kids, you know, that may be homeless right now. We've got a lot of homeless people living around and that's what they are doing with their life. But, you know, I just think that what you're doing is an encouragement to people because you're doing it in a humble way that's letting them know, hey, if you bring me an idea, I can help you build it. And that's why I send people to you is because they come to me or what do you think about this? And I'm like, I think you need to talk to Alex because he has taken so many of my clients and has become um, a mentor. Uh, you're, you just build them up and they're doing well. I haven't heard any negative feedback from working with you. I know I don't have any negative mm -hmm. feedback. So with that being said, tell me if I send somebody to you and they're on the ground with their idea, what are you going to help them with from the get-go? How does this work? What's the process? Mm -hmm. So step-by-step, step, I focus on the mindset and it's not a mindset program, but if we're taking action with the wrong goal in mind or too small of a goal, then it's kind of, it defeats the purpose to a certain extent, right? And so we do start off with, hey, why are you here right now? How long have you been thinking about starting this business, right? What's your passion? Are you a life coach? Are you a, a financial coach? Do you have this expertise? Okay, why haven't you started this on your own? Because I ask people that to understand what challenges are they facing or mental obstacles that's not helping them go from point A to point B, right? Because again, people talk to me and they say, oh, this is great information. This is interesting. I'm like, interesting. What I'm going to have for dinner tonight might be interesting, like changing your life. That has to be more important than interesting. But it's right. because it's like, hey, so like you're not on this phone just asking for information. Like you're not doing that 10 hours a day. Um, like you're here to go from point A to point B. That's why we're talking. So we work through all of that mess in the beginning just so they know, hey, you're thinking about this too small. Or if you're not thinking about it too small, maybe you're thinking too quickly, right? They want to make 100,000 a month or a million subscribers in six months. Mm -hmm. And so that's why initially I set their goals with them. What's their point A? What's their point B? Help them set that clearly from day one because at least we know where we're going, mm -hmm. right? And so once you know that, then we dive into, okay, what is your business? Who's your ideal customer? How old are they, right? What challenges are they facing to where they would say, oh, I need to talk to Jim or I need to talk to Christy. Like what exactly is their obstacle because then once you understand what they're looking for, we can craft your offer. Meaning, what are you selling, right? Are you selling coaching? Is it consulting? Is it a course? Is it group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching? You know, I help clients figure out what exactly is the right offer, the right amount of months, the right price point to maximize, you know, affordability as well as your own revenue. So we work through the mindset, then the offer. Then, of course, you have a great offer that nobody knows about. Right. So we need to build your marketing, your YouTube channel. If you want to grow faster, maybe some paid advertising, your website, landing pages. OK, great. You're getting leads. You're getting traffic. But now are you selling them? Are you selling them on, on the phone or on a Web page? How do we actually generate revenue? Right. So that's why it's a 12 month process minimum, because to go from point A, just having that first conversation to you know point B, having that business growing, scaling, all those key systems are working in alignment with each other. That's not going to happen in 12 weeks or a few months. Right. right. And so there's a lot of programs out there. Number one that will sell people on that concept. Like, Oh, it's going to take, you know, three months, give me 90 days. I'm going to help you build a seven figure business. And mm -hmm. it's just, that's not realistic. Number one, but number two, a lot of the time they say it's a coaching program, but what they do is they sell people on, you know, expensive packages where it's just pre-recorded videos and group coaching, none of it's personalized, none of it's tailored. You've mentioned in all your testimonials about me in, in this video, you know, I text Alex every day. I, we have yeah. conversations. Like it's all about because your goals and your challenges, let's say, are different than another client and vice versa. And then with another client, they may already have a foundation. Maybe they're already making 10,000 a month, but they have no YouTube channel, right? So every client I work with, it's personalized, it's tailored because their goals are different. Their challenges are different. But as you can see, we walk through the entire process of, Again, what's the mindset? What's the goal? What are you offering? Who are you offering it to? How do we communicate that message to them as effectively as possible? And then, of course, how do you make money? How do you deliver value to them? And how do you grow this into a long-term business? And so, I mean, as you can see, it's kind of a like a play, playbook. It's kind of a system at this point to where, you know, they can work with me in 12 months to probably get 12 years of results, realistically, wow, yeah. if they did it on their own. I believe it. I have learned that you are the type of person that when you take on a client and let's say they've already paid their fees and they're in, but you get quiet. Mm -hmm. So I tell people if he's quiet, he's waiting on you. 
because I think that with you, you want to see somebody taking the steps. So once you give them the steps, if they don't hear, if you don't hear back from them, then you know they're not taking the steps and you're waiting. You're not, you don't pressure at all. You're not pressuring, but you're waiting because you feel like, and I, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you have a personality of like, I am ready to run with you when you're ready to run. But if you're going to stand still, I'll stand still. And that's what I feel about you is because at the very first, when I wouldn't start doing the videos, because I will reiterate, that's not my favorite thing to do. When I started reaching out to you and saying, hey, you know, what do I need to do here? Or what about my website? Because you've got all of that set up for me. You take care of my bulk emails. You do all that fun stuff. But at the very beginning, you got quiet. And I told my husband, see, he wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, reach out to him. Mm -hmm. So when I started taking steps to let you know that, hey, I'm on this and I'm ready to go, you have literally taken me by the hand and are pulling me along. And that has been the experience that I want people to understand that when they deal with Alex O'Baron, that's what they're getting. Somebody that is excited to run with you. And if you talk to Alex and he's like, I'm not sure that you're ready for this step yet. He's going to tell you that he's not going to take your money and say, oh, well, sorry about your luck. He's not going to take your money at all. If he doesn't know that he can grow with you, you've been an absolute pleasure over this year to work with. And I wish that people can feel my spirit with how I feel about you, because I feel like that if they would jump on board and get started, uh, building their dream with you that they're going to be so excited at what you can help them turn that idea into. Uh, thank you so much. And I'll, I'll leave this final note because just like you said, I don't really sign up a client and say, okay, hop on my back. I'm going to take you from the zero yard line to the, to get a touchdown. Right. It's like, Hey, like let's lock arms and like, we're going to do this together. Um, because like you're saying, if a, I, I, when I work with a client, I say, Hey, three calls a month, here's the link to schedule the calls. Here's your action plan. Now it's up to you. So like if a client doesn't schedule calls, I mean, I'll check in with them. Like if I haven't heard from them in like a month or two, I'm like, Hey, like what's going on. But it's like, I'm not here to babysit clients because Hey, like everything we do is very focused and clear. But once it, like, just like we met up in Miami and we had an in-person, like I think two or three hour long brainstorm session. And you're like, you don't do this with every client. And I'm like, well, no client really comes to Miami and comes to meet me and <laughs> like sits in front of me. And we have this conversation. Right. So you kind of, you get out what you put in just like anything as just like a fitness trainer, just like a diet. If you don't follow the steps, if you're not maximizing the benefit of it, then um, that's up to you. But again, like just like with our kids, my fiance and I told her, like, I'm not going to put our kids on my back and you know make them spoiled and just get them to the finish line. I'm going to lock arms with them and say, hey, I'm going to give you the tools, the knowledge and the training and everything, the parenting to get you there and help you. But you're not just going to hop on my back. I already went from the, the start line to the finish line and I'm still right. growing. So I'm not going to do that over and over again. I'm going to lock arms with people if they want to grow together, just like you. Um, the results are there. Yeah. And I mean, it's been it's been a fun run, a fun run. It's and, fun. You know, it's fun to grow and do things yeah. together. You know, I'm going to have a link below for him. Uh, that you can reach out to him directly and schedule a call with him. Throw your ideas out there and see what it is that he can help you accomplish because you're going to be surprised. It's going to be great and I know it. But thank you so much, Alex, for being on here today. Uh, you are such a joy. I am so glad that you got to watch Deliverance finally. And Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, we'll have to talk about that. I was going to say, well, thanks for having me on. I'll see you in Tennessee, but I won't see you in the chalet. I'll see you in the cabin. I'm and sorry, people probably to... won't know that, but like what that means, but I'll, I'll see you in the cabin section. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, that's another video. <laughs> yeah. Just Google deliverance, famous scenes and yeah. Comment below. How about that? <laughs> he was coming to Tennessee to visit me and I was just giving him a little heads up about, Hey, do you want to be up in the mountains by yourself in a chalet or would you like to be in a cabin closer to the city? And so I said, watch deliverance and then give me your answer. Hmm. He's going to be in a cabin close to the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easiest decision besides engage, being engaged to my fiance. Easiest decision of my life. Easiest. <laughs> and I did that video. So I know that you did ask her. I've got the video still. Yep. I need to share that as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, you, you did a good job. You kept that secret. Yeah, I, I told my fiance was right here. I was right here. Christy was right here. And I was like, 
I'm going to propose to Grace, you know, don't, don't make a reaction. And so Christy got it on video and everything. So I did, I yeah. did. It was, it was the absolute joy of my life. I felt like my son I didn't have was actually proposing to his mm -hmm. girlfriend in front of me. It was so nice. It was. <laughs> Again, thank you for being on here. You're always a pleasure. And I am going to sign off, I guess, because I can't brag on you any more than I have today. And you have, <laughs> you've built me up again. So I'm ready to keep running and I'm excited to see what the rest of 2024 is going to bring for us. So thank you again for coming on. You are welcome here anytime. Absolutely. Thank you, Christy. Talk soon. Okay. Thank you guys for watching today. And like I said, there's going to be a link below for him. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.